Hey, it's Chris Kirkpatrick, the Save Bet Money Guy, and I wanted to do a quick video on buy term and invest a difference. Now, full transparency, I am not a licensed agent. I cannot sell life insurance. However, I have a big background in the financial industry. I was a head of business development for a Fortune 1000 financial company. I have uh, pivoted that to becoming an online marketer. Uh, I'm a, an entrepreneur. I'm a, a mentor. I help people build their businesses online. Uh, it's what I love to do. I love helping entrepreneurs with their financial planning, with their financial structure, and giving them strategies to help scale and leverage their business and improve uh, their life ultimately, right? Now, um, that said, there's all these different opinions out there. And so rather than go out and do this video on my own, um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go out and find somebody that I knew, uh, that I trusted, that I know the way he thinks and the way he believes. So I have a guy that is a guy, a guy that I work with. His name is Caleb Gilliams. He is the owner of a company called Better Wealth Solutions. And so what I've done is I've asked Caleb, and he did it. Uh, he put together a presentation on the concept of buy term and invest a difference, which I know a lot of Primerica agents, I know a lot of Dave Ramsey followers, Susie Orman followers, stuff like that, people like that. Uh, they believe that buy term and invest a difference is uh, the best way to go. Now, here's what I want to say. People like Dave Ramsey, uh, he does a lot of good in the world, right? He helps a lot of people around the world of, uh, of debt and, and helping eliminating debt. When it comes to financial planning, when it comes to investments, when it comes to life insurance, he doesn't uh, really give the full picture. He uh, attacks it from a very emotional perspective. And so what I want to, uh, what I want to encourage you to do is to really get rid of the emotion Think about it logically, look at the X's and O's and the numbers, because uh, when you do that, I think you're going to see what I have, uh, what, what, I, what I see, what I, what I really encourage entrepreneurs, and really not just entrepreneurs, but anybody that uh, really believes that the best asset they're ever going to have in their life is right here, and the best thing that they're ever going to be able to do is to invest in themselves uh, and find opportunity in the markets based on what they know. So without further ado, I want to introduce Caleb Gilliams. He is. He put this video together for me at my request. I'm blending this together. I'm gonna edit it together. You're gonna see it. So please watch this presentation. If you have any questions, comments, comment below, and I will engage with you. I look forward to it. You guys have a blessed, inspirational day. We'll talk soon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the buy term and invest the difference video. This video, um, because of kind of my passion when it comes to money, finance, and um, just kind of my pursuit of understanding how a wealth is created and used, this has been, this has been kind of a, a, a process that I've gone through um, these last couple years. And I want to share with you kind of what I've learned as it relates to life insurance, as it relates to buy term and invest the difference, and um, just now kind of my belief um, and I hope this video is super helpful because um, there's a lot of misinformation on the internet when it comes to buy term and invest a difference. So before I before I kind of share with you how why I believe what I believe in, let me kind of give you the overview of buy term and invest a difference. The thought process is simple. Your your life, um, your your need to produce income is is most people's greatest financial need. So no one's arguing that life insurance is a bad thing, but the, the thought of buying term and investing the difference is buy temporary insurance today and then invest um, the difference of what, what a permanent policy would be into, a, uh, into an investment like a mutual fund, have that grow to a certain point, and then when you're at, at age 65 or whatever you wanna retire, you can live off of your investments and you can drop off your, your life insurance. And this, this, this is a common belief that a lot of financial advisors believe. Um, there are, are people on the, on the radio, or very famous people, that um, tell people to do this strategy. And for the longest time, I believe that this was the very best thing um, to do with our money because I saw life insurance as a pure expense. And if life insurance is a pure expense, we want to spend as little money as possible and, and invest the difference. Um, now, I, I have a totally radically different belief um, and it's only because of understanding um, different different numbers, understanding the different philosophies of wealth. And in this video, I kind of want to bring you to where at one time in my life I believed in buy term and invest a difference, and now I want to put as much money into permanent life insurance as possible. Um, so to do this, we're going to actually look at um, we're going to actually compare life insurance like it's an investment first. 
So we're going to compare the real rate of return that, and that you would have to get in an alternative account if you did the buy term and invest a different strategy. But then we're going to take a step back and be like, okay, life insurance is not an investment. So why do I think, why do I put as much money in into it? Because I know how to use it and because I see it as an and asset. And because I understand how to use it, I want to run as much money through it as possible. And I, 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 I guarantee at the end of this video, you'll have a different view uh, of permanent life insurance. So um, one of the first things to notice is the life insurance that I'm showing is very unique uh, versus the other kind of life insurance out there. Um, one thing that I teach my clients and what I've learned to do is overfund certain policies. And when you overfund certain policies, you're getting as little death benefit as possible and the most amount of cash value or living benefits as possible. So in most insurance policies or whole life insurance policies, the first couple of years your cash value is zero. As you can as you'll notice, the first couple of years in the in the cash value column in this permanent policy there's cash value. Now there's not dollar for dollar, um, but there there's significant cash value in the early years. And there's also an increasing uh, death benefit. And the reason it's increasing um, is it has to every single year to make all these benefits tax free. And, and in another video, I'll go into kind of what an overfunded policy looks like and why it's why it's significant and why if you're using life insurance as a savings alternative, why you want to overfund it and not just get a traditional um, whole life insurance contract that's mainly for um, life insurance. And so and so as you can see, this cash value is in increasing every single year. And, and over 30 years, there's this little rate of return button that says 4.09%. Now, without any context, someone could look at that number and say, well, that seems kind of small. So some of you might say, that's actually, pretty, that's actually a pretty good um, number. Um, but, but the reality is 4.09% doesn't get anyone that I work with super, super excited. But by the end of this video, understanding that 4.9% and what you get is absolutely incredible. Um, and so the first thing that I, I wanna just show people is, let's, let's compare this to a savings account. You know, if you're, if you're looking at, a, um, at, at life insurance and you're putting in uh, $10,000 over 30 years, if you were putting it into an account that was earning no interest, you can see in the beginning, the savings account has a little bit more liquidity, has a little bit more access to money, but over 30 year difference, um, the, the savings account is behind by almost 300,000. Now, why did I compare it to a savings account originally? Because this is, this is supposed to be buy term and invest a difference. The reality is when you structure and use whole, overfunded whole life insurance uh, to its greatest advantage, it has you can have as much control over these these contracts as you do in a savings account which which is amazing when you think about it because um because what other vehicles out there give you the control of a savings account with anywhere near four percent and that's kind of how i uh, originally bring this up to people that i talk to is where can you control money like a savings account but earn anywhere near 4% over your lifetime. Now, again, 4%, what does this number really mean? If I copy this number and say, okay, we're, we're going to put this number in and we're going to assume that the savings account earns this every single year and I put this in the alternative account, you're going to notice at the end of 30 years, there's $592,482. There's exactly dollar for dollar. So that's, well, that's what's saying this life insurance is actually earning 9.0 9% um, every single year without a down year, even though in the beginning it gets, it, it's, a, it's a true internal rate of return if you took $10,000 over 30 years and earned 4% every single year, you would get 592000 And so life insurance is very exponential. But the powerful thing is these, this cash value throughout your life you can utilize um, with, with, with the loan provision and actually utilize that capital to um, either use for lifestyle or pay off debt or invest in investments or invest in, in a business that you want to start. And the cool thing is your money is going to continue to grow even after you borrow it against it. So it's going to continue to have this efficiency but then also give you capital to potentially um, use your money in multiple places. But again, we're looking at, and we're gonna compare this to an investment. So if someone wasn't gonna use their capital throughout their life and just wanted to see this as an investment, 
they, they can't just look at that 4% and say, oh, I can get a better rate of return. Because when life insurance is structured properly, it, it, it grows and can be used tax-free. And so in an alternative account, to put your money in a place that you have control over, wouldn't that have to be taxable, income tax? So any interest that you earn, wouldn't, wouldn't, that, wouldn't you have to have uh, pay income tax on that? And so um, I know there's different states out there. I know people can be in different tax brackets. I'm going to use the 30% because a lot of my clients that I work with are, are in the higher tax brackets and this is a, this is a number that um, they feel comfortable using. And so in an alternative account, you would have to earn 5.84% every single year without a down year to keep up with the control and, and liquidity um, and that you have over a overfunded whole life insurance contract. Now, when people look at that and they say, okay, now I, you know, 5.84%, while that doesn't seem super exciting, I now understand that not everyone can do that. Because if you look at, if you look at the last 17 years um, in the market, and I'm going to pull up a calculator. By the way, all these calculators are used um, by Truth Concepts. And you, can, you can look them up at truthconcepts.com. Um, and, and you can download the calculators yourself. Um, and and they're, they're amazing when breaking down kind of the numbers. But if you look at the S&P 500 with dividends over 17 years, the average rate of return is 6.12%. Is now, in, an, on, in other videos and what I, when I show people is the difference between average rates of return and actual. Uh, for most people, the actual rate of return is a lot smaller. For example, if you had $100 invested over, over the 17-year period of time, the actual rate of return that you would get would, would be 4.5%. And, and why is that so different is every time you lose money, you don't just lose that money, you lose what that money could have earned. And so while averages take all these, um, add them together and to divide by 13, 17, the actual rate of return actually uh, shows losses affecting your accounts far greater than gains because when you lose money, you don't just lose that money, you lose what that money could have earned. So it's just a, an important, and I have other videos that kind of go into the difference between average rates of return and actual rates of return. But if you look at the last 17 years and you look at the S&P with, with not assuming any taxes or fees, you're looking at the, and the actual rates of return were anywhere from 4 to 6%. And then you look at this, this whole life insurance contract, and we haven't even touched fees or the cost of life insurance yet, and we're getting near that 6%. So something to just keep in mind. So speaking of fees, when you invest your money, you can't have your money just be invested for free. And so there's, there's a lot of debate when it comes to fees. There are, there are people out there like um, John Bogle, who have started Vanguard, um, and, and it's an index where you can invest with very low uh, fees. And then on the other side of the coin, there's um, mutual funds that you could put your money in that you could be charged over 2% and not really know it. And so uh, a standard um, uh, on the low end, the standard side is 1%. Now granted, it's 1% usually plus whatever the other money managers at mutual funds charge, but I'm gonna use a 1% management fee um, just for this example. And so now assuming you had an investment um, that you that you had, you have to factor in some kind of control, you had to pay taxes, you have to pay 1% management fee. Now you have to earn 6.91% every single year without a down year just to keep up with life insurance. And now we're gonna actually go into the cost of insurance because if we're gonna tr do a true c comparison of buy, term, and invest the difference, we have to look at the cost of insurance. Well, this is built in the cost of insurance and you can see your death benefit is ever increasing. What if you didn't have that? What if you bought temporary insurance? Well, then you would have to um, buy a 30 year or 20 year, whatever term policy. And at the end of 30 years, this term policy is gonna drop off. And so you, all the money that you spent in, 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 in this example, the $15,000 that you spent in over your life is going to be gone. The $15,000 and what that could have earned is also going to be gone. And then ultimately, the coverage is never meant to pay out um, because less, less than 2% of uh, life insurance uh, term policies pay out. But anyways, if you're going to pay money, this is money that you, you can't invest. 
So if we're making the, the, ar the argument of buy term and invested difference, we have to take this 500 from the 10,000 uh, from person A versus person B, and this $500 is going to buy term insurance. And so now you have to earn 7.33% every single year without a down year just to keep up with the minimums of the overfunded whole life insurance. And now the point that I'm going to make next is very, very important to understand. When I work with my clients, they don't, they don't compare this number to their investments because they don't see whole life insurance as an investment. They see it as an and asset or a savings alternative. So let me, my, my life changed dramatically when I realized that this number was not this or whatever I wanted. It was an and. I can have, I can have the rate of return, the growth, in this this contract and how how I use this capital throughout my life and when I realized that my whole mindset changed from this being a or asset or comparing it to an a buy term and invest a different strategy to a I want to flow as much money through this and be able to use this capital throughout my life and together I can make so much more and so if you have investments that earn more than eight percent that doesn't mean you shouldn't do this strategy. That means you should do both if you're confident um, in this in this rate of return. And so that's the, that the conversation of of the the and versus or is has also been um, really amazing. And so when I when I realized when I started understanding this calculator, when I started understanding the the reason why not not only life insurance is is a good growth long term if you compare it to if you had to pay taxes, if you had to pay fees if you had to actually pay for insurance, it's not too shabby of a, as a product. It's, it's pretty amazing. But then when you realize that we have to compare this to a savings account or compare this to a place that you have total control over, that's, that, e that even uh, makes it even more incredible because what savings accounts or what places can you control money that you can get anywhere near this? The answer is there's none. And so there's one other thing that I want to add to this video that gets a little bit more advanced. But for the, for the entrepreneurs or the investors out there, um, I really want this to register. And so um, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned kind of um, uh, when, it, when, I, when I say that I use this as an and asset, that can be kind of a, a foreign kind of concept to get our mind around. But when, when, you, when you put money into um, an insurance contract that's structured properly, you can borrow against your capital, and and I call it con using control costs. But you pay the insurance company to use their capital, and they just put your money up as collateral. But the cool thing is, your money is continuing to grow just as just as it would be otherwise. Um, but the insurance company g can give you a guaranteed loan, and they're the only companies that can do this because they can't lose. You're either going to pay them back you're going to die or you're going to cancel the policy in all three ways they cover their bases and so for the insurance companies it's a guaranteed uh, loan and so because it's a guaranteed uh, loan and because you're part owner in the insurance company you get a preferred loan rate so let's assume that you're an investor and you can earn a 12 percent rate of return and i'm just going to pull up a rate calculator because when i saw this uh, it was really eye-opening to me so Let's assume that you can earn a 12% rate of return, and what most people are doing is they're paying they're paying cash. So they're going and they're 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 gonna pay cash for an investment that earns 12%, and that's it's a good rate of return. No one's gonna no one's gonna say that that's a terrible rate of return. Um, but but the alternative is, what if there was a better way to do that investment? What if your money was in an overfunded whole life insurance contract growing for the rest of your life, but you also had that opportunity to invest in that 12%, but instead of taking your money out from earning in the insurance policy, you're able to borrow against, meaning you get to use the insurance company's money and instead just have the cost of what you're paying to use that money. So some people call it interest cost, some people call it control cost. We'll say in this example it's 5%. Uh, actually the company that I do a lot of business with is, is less than 5%, but 5% is a good round number. So um, if you had the cash buyer, the person that was doing buy term and invested difference would take their money, put it with, the, with this investment and earn 12%. Whereas the person that was putting flowing their money through the life insurance is going to get the efficiency of long-term uninterrupted growth 
but also is going to invest in this. But instead of putting all their money, they're going to put the, for every hundred dollars that they invest, they're going to spend five dollars for the interest cost, and that twelve percent rate of return now turns into one hundred and forty because now they're starting to act more like the bank. They're starting to leverage their money wisely, um, and so now they're now they're able to turn that 12% investment into 140% because now their dollars are being more productive um, and in multiple places and so when you when you really take a step back and I know that this video is not like a an elementary there's a lot to cover but when you take a step back and you look at the the leverage opportunity that you have um, the answer to the buy term and invest a difference is just a it's just the wrong question to ask if you can if you have an investment that can earn a great rate of return you want to do life insurance and if you don't you want to do life insurance because of the long-term growth um, and we didn't even talk about the distrib distribution side and the legacy passing on side but purely from a rate of return side um, the buy term and invest the difference are people that don't understand how you can use an overfunded whole life insurance contract um, to do multiple multiple things and um, un don't understand the the, the rate of return, their internal rate of return that we looked is tax-free, which is incredible, which is after fees, which is uh, amazing, and also provides a permanent death benefit, not a temporary death benefit, um, that is expensive and uh, goes away. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching.